Laubus. I'm David G and today I'm in Vilnius, Lithuania. Lithuania is a pretty small country and it may often be overlooked by travelers, but it's a great place to visit. Although Lithuania is small in both population and size, you'll find a rich culture with amazing places to visit. And importantly, Lithuania is a budget-friendly destination. And throughout this video, I'll make a point of showing you how to get the best value for your money when traveling here. So first, I'll be going over some important things to know about Lithuania. And then later in the video, I'll give you an idea of which parts of the country you might want to visit and what to do there. If you've never been to Lithuania, then I highly recommend watching the whole video. But if you're already familiar with Lithuania, you'll likely find this video useful too. I've included a ton of travel tips and first-hand experience that I gathered during dozens of trips to Lithuania. I even lived here for two summers. So let's dive right into what to know about Lithuania. The most popular time to visit Lithuania is definitely summer, but you can see that I'm here in the dead of winter and it's also nice. The name of Lithuania in Lithuanian, Lietuva, literally means place where it rains a lot. So it's going to be precipitating all year round no matter when you visit. All that means is that you should come prepared, you know, wear a rain jacket, all that kind of stuff, or if you come in the winter, have good winter clothes. So really, whatever time of year you decide to visit Lithuania, in my opinion at least, it's probably going to be a good time to do it. Lithuania is the biggest of the three Baltic states, and it's a member of the European Union. Lithuania joined the EU in 2004 and later adopted the Euro, which is used by most countries in the EU now. But unlike most members of the EU, Lithuania's national pastime is basketball. Basketball is a source of national pride in Lithuania, and people often take it pretty seriously, so beware. Another thing that's sometimes taken pretty seriously in Lithuania is superstition. Some Lithuanian superstitions may be familiar to you, like knocking on wood. But one superstition that was a complete surprise to me when I first encountered it in Lithuania is that giving flowers in even numbers is bad luck. So you'll basically only find flowers being sold in odd numbers in Lithuania. And then each year, the first time you hear a cuckoo bird in the spring, you're supposed to pull out your wallet and shake it so that the coins can be heard. This is believed to ring in a year of economic prosperity by some. And then the first time you see a stork in the spring, if it's flying, that means you'll have the chance to travel a lot that year. But if it's sitting in its nest, it means you'll be stuck at home most of the time. Of course, these all are just superstitions, but keeping them in mind will help you understand Lithuania a little bit better. Another thing that's taken pretty seriously in Lithuania is its cuisine. And while food may not be the only reason to visit Lithuania, it's definitely a good reason. Bread for free. Lithuania has an array of unique dishes to try, and you can basically find them all in the capital city of Vilnius. The most well-known dish in modern-day Lithuania has to be Zeppeline, which translates to English literally as Zeppelins. But since you won't really find these much outside of Lithuania, let's just stick to the Lithuanian name. Zeppeline are oval-shaped, with a special kind of potato puree as the outer part, and either meat or cheese curds inside. And yes, they really look kind of like a blimp or zeppelin. Generally, they're eaten with sour cream or a gravy-like sauce known as spirguce. But you can eat them with both if you're feeling really hungry. Zeppeline can be eaten year-round, but just keep in mind that they're really, really filling. Another great hearty option are bovine bline, which we call potato pancakes or latkes in English. In addition to basketball, another Lithuanian national pastime is mushroom foraging. And you can often find bovine bline served with a fresh boletus mushroom sauce on top. Foraging season is usually during the fall in Lithuania and it's a very interesting time to visit the country. It's amazing the amount of tasty mushrooms that Lithuanians are able to find in their forests. Don't eat those ones. But if you choose to visit in summer, which is the most popular time to visit, then shalti borscht or cold borscht is a must-have. Even though the color may remind you a little bit of Pepto-Bismol, don't let that scare you away. It's pretty darn good and it's really refreshing on hot days. But just keep in mind that it's a seasonal dish and you'll only find it during the summer. There are plenty of restaurants all around Lithuania serving these dishes and more. And Lithuania also loves its sweets and has a huge variety of them. Nomeda is a popular candy bar with apple filling, and I always end up eating way too many of them when I'm in Lithuania. And then Shakotis is a rich tree-shaped cake. It's achy and sweet and you'll find it everywhere around the country. And then my personal favorite is Suralis. It's kind of like a candy bar made out of Lithuanian cheese curds or varshke. And it comes in a ton of different flavors and is always coated in chocolate. Lithuanian sweets may be a little different than what you're used to, but give them a try and I'm sure you'll find something you like. And when you eat in Lithuania, you usually have to drink too. And drinking in Lithuania often involves beer, mead, or even harder stuff known as dektina. Just don't try to buy it in the grocery store after 8pm. 
But don't worry, if you don't drink alcohol, there are plenty of other options too. But still be warned that there's likely to be alcohol available almost anywhere you go. One kind of strange non-alcoholic drink that I've come to enjoy in Lithuania is Vitotis mineral water. It's like a salty mineral water with bubbles. And based on that information, it probably doesn't sound that good. At least it didn't to me, but then I gave it a try and it actually turned out to be pretty good. And if you prefer to save money on food and drink while traveling in Lithuania, then being familiar with the grocery stores is pretty important. Lithuanian grocery stores are pretty good, and they're likely cheaper than what you're used to back home. A few common chains are Maxima and Iki, and bigger locations will usually have a hot food bar where you can find most of the national dishes. Many grocery stores also feature large deli areas, and the smoked fish that you'll find there is a must try. The kingdom of smoked fish. The first time I set foot in Lithuania seven years ago, something felt familiar. The reason for this hit me when I was eating what's known as kugelis in Lithuania. Kugelis is nearly the same thing as the common dish known as kugel in the United States. See, before World War II and the Holocaust, Vilnius was often referred to as the Jerusalem of the North due to its large Jewish population. In fact, my Litvak or Jewish Lithuanian roots are a huge reason for my interest in the country. That and my beautiful wife is from here. There is still a smaller Jewish community in Vilnius and around Lithuania. And tons of the food eaten in Lithuania today is similar to or the same as the recipes that you'll find in Jewish delis in the US. For a lot of you traveling to Lithuania, particularly from the US or Canada, this could be a plus. I mean, Lithuania doesn't just have good kugel. You'll find great pickles, herring, borscht, smoked fish, and a bunch of other Jewish American staples. But if you're not a huge fan of deli food, there are plenty more options for you. The Lithuanian diet kind of has a reputation of being heavy on meat, dairy, and fish. But if you're a vegetarian or have other dietary restrictions, I've increasingly noticed that grocery stores and restaurants make an effort to provide options for everyone. So Lithuania is pretty much guaranteed to meet your dining needs once and probably surprise you with a few dishes you wouldn't have expected. But even though food is important and we could go on for another few hours about it, let's take a step back and take a look at getting to and around Lithuania. Most travelers to Lithuania enter via Vilnius Airport, and Vilnius is also a great base for your trip. From within Europe, you can usually find cheap flights to Vilnius. I've bought dozens of Air Baltic tickets for under 50 euros. And traveling from North America or other long-haul places, you'll usually want to account for at least $600 for round-trip tickets and economy. Once you arrive, getting from Vilnius Airport to the city or to other cities in Lithuania is pretty straightforward. There's a train and express buses to the city, but taxis and rideshare apps like Uber or Bolt are also pretty reasonable in Vilnius. It's still usually cheaper to take public transport if you're traveling alone, but I've taken Bolt from the airport for less than 5 euros before. Renting a car also isn't too expensive most of the time. Prices usually start around 15 euros a day driving in Lithuania. But public transport really is quite good in most of the country, and it's also pretty cheap. So if you're not planning to visit remote areas or travel as a part of a larger group, public transport is usually going to be the most budget-friendly way to get where you want to go. I'll talk a bit more about getting around the country once we get into the part where we go over where to visit in Lithuania. But before we look at what other great stuff this country has to offer, let's take a moment to look at what made today's Lithuania what it is. Lithuania is not just an ex-Soviet country. Yes, Lithuania was a part of the Soviet Union until 1990. But during the long Soviet occupation of Lithuania, Lithuanians constantly fought to keep their culture alive, including their language. On August 23, 1989, Lithuanians stood together with Latvians and Estonians to protest the Soviet regime. This was known as the Baltic Way, and the protest took place by forming a human chain across the entirety of all three Baltic countries. Not long after the Baltic Way, Lithuania regained its independence. So now that we've got a lot of the important stuff about Lithuania out of the way, let's look at where to go and what to do once you're there. Vilnius is the capital city of Lithuania, and it's a nice combination of the international vibe that you'd expect from a capital city and Lithuanian culture. And by the way, in English people often will say Vilnius, which is fine in English, but in Lithuanian it's pronounced Vilnius. Regardless, people will understand what you're talking about using either pronunciation. And speaking of English, you'll find that most younger people here do speak good English, while the older generation often learn Russian as a second language. But of course, speaking a little bit of Lithuanian is the best way to go. The Lithuanian language is one of the oldest languages in Europe. It's not the easiest language to learn, but even just learning a few words will get you pretty far. Labas means hello, Achu means thank you, and Iki is a great way to say goodbye. Speaking even just a little bit of Lithuanian is usually appreciated, especially given the history of Russian language and other languages kind of becoming dominant languages at different points in time. In Vilnius, the old town is a great place to stay, and there's more than enough to do for a few days. The Gediminas castle tower overlooks the city, and going up the hill to take in the views is a must. Entrance to the tower just costs a couple euros, and down the hill from the tower, you'll find the main square of Vilnius Old Town. Cathedral's Eichstätt or Cathedral Square in English. 
From there, you can have a nice walk around the pedestrian-friendly Old Town. And there's really a ton of history to take in while walking around Old Town Vilnius. You can either join a guided tour or walk around at your own pace. I've done both, but the tour might be better if you're on a tight schedule. Otherwise, there's a fair amount of information on signs around the city. And you can get a free touristic map or mark the sites you want to see in Google Maps. There are lots of nice restaurants, plenty of good hotels, and an array of cool local businesses to check out. One stop that I'd highly recommend including in your plans is the neighborhood of Ujapis. Ujapis is a self-proclaimed republic in the middle of Old Town Vilnius with its own constitution. It's probably my favorite place to walk around in Vilnius, but go see for yourself. Vilnius also has lots of nature right in the city. Vingo Parkas or Vingis Park is a local favorite for a short stroll. And Pavel Nis Regional Park is another nice place to go for a walk. It's bigger and has a more rural feeling, but it's still within the city limits. But Vilnius is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can see and do in Lithuania. If you're limited on time, by all means, go visit Vilnius and it will be great. But if you have more than a few days, there are tons of places worth visiting all around the country. One of the easiest day trips from Vilnius is to the town of Trakai. Trakai is home to a pristine island castle that's really worth a visit. And around the island, short boat tours on the lake are pretty popular. The Trakai Castle is one of those places you have to visit when you're in Lithuania, at least if you have the time. And the entrance price is 10 euros. If you don't want to pay 10 euros to enter, then I'd still visit the town of Trakai, but probably the 10 euros is going to be worth it, so definitely consider that. If you go, you must try the local specialty Kibine too. They're a kind of dough pie stuffed with lamb or beef, and the dish has its roots with the local Koraite people that have lived in the area for hundreds of years. Trake is also a great choice for a day trip because it's just the short train ride or drive away from Vilnius. But if you have time for more than just a day trip from Vilnius, then the coastal town of Klaipeda could be a great place to visit. Klaipeda is Lithuania's third largest city, and its location on the Baltic Sea makes it a nice place to visit. From Vilnius, you can take a bus or train or drive, and it will take you a little bit under four hours to get to Klaipeda. In the city itself, there's a small old town that's definitely worth visiting and there are beaches within the city limits. That area along the Baltic Sea also happens to be a great place to walk along the beach in search of amber. It does take some luck and focus searching to find amber, but if you don't find any yourself, you can easily buy it in stores all around the country. And prices for amber in Lithuania tend to be much lower than you'd find outside of Lithuania. Klaipeda also has a nice selection of restaurants, including a luxury dining experience at the boat restaurant Meridianas. When I spent a summer studying Lithuanian at Klaipeda University, I often went to Meridianas for their lunch special. But the Koronian Spit is just a short ferry ride away and you'll find a lot more to do there. There are pine forests up and down the spit, and at the end of the Lithuanian part you'll find the cozy town of Nida. Right next to Nida there are massive sand dunes, and the town itself is known for its amazing smoked fish and its local artist population. You could also take a direct bus all the way to Nida from Vilnius, but I'd recommend a stop in Klaipeda at least once. And then going up the coast the opposite way of Nida, there's the beach town of Palanga. In summer, Palanga gets packed and it can seem like the whole country is there on some weekends. And though a trip to Klaipeda and the surrounding area could be worth it in winter, it's during summer that you'll really experience it at its best. And that's not to mention that the Baltic Sea is quite cold. So if you have hopes of spending relaxing days on the beach, then summer is going to be the best time to go for you. And then Lithuania's second biggest city is Konas. Konas may not be that well known internationally, but it's definitely worth a visit. There's a nice old town to explore, and the city is home to a medieval castle. Nearby you'll also find the town of Rumshishkes, which is home to one of the largest open-air ethnographic museums in all of Europe. If you've got a half day to spare, I think it's really worth a visit. And then one other activity that you should really consider on a trip to Lithuania is adding a spa day or two to your itinerary. In fact, I'm sitting in a spa hotel right now talking to you. There are two well-known spa towns in Lithuania, Druskininke and Berstonas. Both are known for having a nice selection of spa hotels with reasonable prices. I'm here in Birchtonis myself and I really recommend it. In between spa sessions, there's a nice old town to explore and you can take in views of the landscape from a nearby lookout tower. Made it to the top. Birchtonis is conveniently located near both Konas and Vilnius too. I'm staying at the Royal Spa Residence and it costs about 95 euros a night for two people, including breakfast and unlimited spa access. This is the renovated room, so it's pretty nice and pretty new. And it comes with a balcony, but do not smoke on the balcony. Or you'll have to pay a fine of 60 euros. It's probably already clear that Lithuania is not that expensive of a country to visit, at least compared to other countries in Europe. A decent place to stay will cost you around like 50 euros a night, but if you want something a little nicer, then it's probably going to be around 100. There are both cheaper options and pricier, more luxurious options in both Birchtonis and Druskininke. 
And in the end, the best choice of spa hotel will just depend on your needs and the availability on your travel dates. Do make sure to plan and book well ahead though, because both towns can get booked up, especially on national holidays and weekends. Planning ahead is also a generally good idea for travel to Lithuania. Though you may find last minute availability at low prices in the off season, during peak travel times it's really important to book ahead. This goes for hotels and flights. And for rental cars and popular bus and train routes, you'll also want to book at least a month out where possible. I've also found that some local businesses may offer better pricing over the phone. So if you can call Lithuanian numbers, it's worth a try. Skype offers free trials. So if you're struggling to find a good way to call a Lithuanian number from abroad, that might be it. And on the topic of free things, I've got a whole array of free videos to help you get the best prices on flights, hotels, and save on other travel costs. You can watch all these videos right now for free if you haven't yet. So even if you just need a little more insight for getting the best hotel rates or flight fares for a trip to Lithuania, I've designed these videos to quickly give you the information that you need to do just that. Well that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope just maybe that I convince you to consider a trip to Lithuania next time.